Hello, my name is Reshma Godse. I am part of Persistent Systems AI research team and I am currently working on creating MLOps offering. In this video, I will be taking you through our POV on MLOps. At Persistent, we have been talking to the customers about responsible AI and its five pillars, namely reproducibility, transparency, accountability, privacy and security. And we have various offerings around it. This slide shows what customers are looking for on the left hand side and persistent point of view on the right hand side. The aim is to make customers ML development agile and responsible using MLOps framework that persistent can build for them. The standardization of common ML processes can be achieved by using concepts of data catalog, ML experiments and model registry. Training and deployment of ML models can be automated using a standard CI-CD tool like Jenkins. Often the fairness of ML models gets questioned and the models are criticized to be a black box. So including fairness and explainability audits as part of the MLOps pipeline would be helpful. And finally, it is very important to monitor the model in production and visualize various aspects like data drip, model performance over a period of time to adapt to the changing environment and possibly trigger retraining of the model. Now let's go to the demo. This demo has been built on open source components and is flexible to be hosted on any cloud technology or on-prem. This particular implementation has been hosted on AWS. Let's say there is a financial institute which wants to build a model that can help them with processing of loan applications. The institute has gathered past data which they intend to use to build a model. The architect of the system has made the data available in Snowflake for the data scientist to use. As you can see, the data is very simple. It has around 6 to 8 features. Loan status is the label column. The architect has provided two versions of this data set. So the first job of the data scientist is to select a data set which would yield a better model. Among all other checks, the data scientist would want to perform fairness check to compare these data sets. The intention is to avoid building a model which would be biased in approving or rejecting loans to a certain group of people. There is a column called property area. Let's see if there is any bias with respect to approving of loans based on where the customer lives. As you can see here, the first data set seems to have some bias. There is higher percentage of loans getting approved for people living in urban area. These are the fairness metrics. Statistical parity difference is the difference between probability of favorable outcome for privileged group and that for underprivileged group. The second one is disparate impact ratio which is ratio of these two probabilities of favorable outcomes for the two groups. Value of 1 indicates no bias. So this data set has huge bias. Let's look at the second data set. The second data set seems to have almost equal distribution for all the applicants. But as we can see here, this data set also has some bias, but it is within acceptable limits. But if needed, a simple algorithm disparate impact remover offered by IBM's AIF 360 package can be used to make this dataset bias free. For this use case, as the bias is within acceptable limits, dataset 2 is finalized to build the model. The data scientist would try out multiple experiments before arriving at the model that performs best on this data. This process can be automated to some extent by using a library called PyCaret. This library supports AutoML. As you can see here, with just few lines of code, the data scientist has managed to perform various tasks. For example, creating data transformation pipeline, comparing various models on this data and selecting top 5, hyperparameter tuning for these top 5 models, creating ensemble for these models, combining these models together to create a blender and finally selecting the one that performs best on this data. As you can see here, gradient boosting classifier wins the race. But if you look at comparison, light GBM is also not very far behind. Plus it is more explainable. So this model can be finalized. The interpretation of the model done using SHAP indicates that credit score and applicant income are the most influential features. High values of these features indicated with red color are associated with positive outcome for loan status that means approval of loans and low values of these features indicated by blue color are associated with negative values of loan status which indicates rejection of loans. Interestingly, this plot indicates presence of small bias in the model. Feature property area is one hot encoded. As we can see here, higher values of property area urban that means value of 1 can be seen associated with positive outcome for loan status and higher value of property area rural can be seen associated with negative value of the loan status. 
for now the data scientist decides to live with this condition one more point to note here is that for this use case as the data set was small training of multiple models was executed on cpus but if data size or a certain model demands more resources then pycaret also supports executing training on gpus the data scientist would want to keep a track of every model tried out on this data for future use as we can see here before running pycaret setup details of mlflow setup have been configured with this pycaret logs all the runs that have been executed under given experiment name in mlflow tracking server the tracking server allows data scientist to see details of individual runs individual run can be augmented with additional information like reference to the data that was used fairness metrics performance metrics etc the tracking server also allows data scientist to compare two runs like this for this use case light gbm was decided to be the final model to be moved to production so this can be now registered in mlflow's model registry as you can see for this particular experiment version number 5 is available in production mode this indicates that version 5 is the production grade version available for this use case this model can now be used in various ways it can be pulled in a spark job it can be hosted on sage maker or it can be hosted on internal node For this use case let's say that the architect decides to create a microservice a simple jenkins job like this can be used to create microservice to serve the model on rest api it can then be used in a scheduled workflow like this to get predictions on new loan applications on periodic basis or it can even be called from a simple user interface or even from a notebook like this to get on the spot predictions let's say that the institute keeps on using this model for a long time Interesting question is how does the institute know when to stop trusting this model their typical workflow is like this the new loan applications land in their snowflake database from there this workflow pulls the data and uses microservice to get predictions but as you can see here the workflow also performs drift detection a product manager or a data scientist can check details of drift in the data on a dashboard like this as you can see here applicant income shows rise with each year credit score shows some fluctuations but later in year 2020 it shows a drop the reason behind this drop could be covid situation people are finding it difficult to follow loan repayment schedule and hence the mean credit score shows a drop so the most important features of the model are showing drift but this drift may or may not influence performance of the model to calculate performance metrics having access to the ground truth would be helpful Let's say that this particular institute updates actual approval or rejection of loans in the database every quarter. Then there can be another workflow scheduled like this which would use the ground truth to measure performance of the model. Then the product manager or a data scientist would be able to check how the model has been performing over a period of time. It can be seen in this case that the accuracy has been dropping and it has dropped significantly in year 2020. The explanation done with SHAP has indicated that applicant income and credit score are the most important features. Let's see the effect of drift on a dashboard. In this dashboard, the left plot shows ground truth plotted against applicant income and credit score. Green dots show approvals and the red ones show rejections. The right plot shows predictions in similar way. We can see that the predictions are very close to ground truth in year 2015 when the model was built. The predictions however start looking different in the later years. It seems that the model has assumed a sharp cutoff on credit score as well as applicant income. So drift in applicant income has indeed affected performance of the model. Let's look at data for year 2020. Here because of the drop in credit score we would expect to see more rejections. But the reality is something else. Now the data scientist or the product manager would need to look at external factors. which would have caused this outcome for example government mandating leniency in approving loans to support the economy other additional features say age health and employment status of the applicant may have got introduced while deciding approval or rejection of loans this introduces a concept drift which can only be addressed by retraining the model on more recent data with new set of features this takes us back again to the data preparation phase and the cycle continues to summarize In this demo we saw various aspects of ML ops in action like data fairness auto ML low code ML experiment tracking model registry model serving monitoring aspects like drift detection and model performance changes thank you for watching this video